So, this is a cracker, a humble cracker, but to me it means a lot more. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of these, particularly when I first started doing science, when I did my PhD. And now I see them on a more or less daily basis, um, as they're very important to sensory scientists. We're currently standing in the laboratory in the Sensory Science Centre, where all our sensory panellists come to assess food products. A sensory scientist is somebody who's interested in how our sensors operate, um, how we smell, how we taste, how we perceive texture, what we see, um, and in this context, particularly food. From this side in the sensory kitchen, we have a series of um, sensory booths. So this is for assessor number nine. Um, each assessor has an individual booth um, because we want them to test foods in isolation and give us their opinion, not the person next to them's opinion. If we were testing today, we'd have lots and lots of samples on the tables here, all labelled with random numbers so nobody knows what they are. We'd then pick up the trays, check our sheet to see which tray we need to give to the person, and we'd offer them the samples, we'd close down the hatch, and we'd let them do their work. So now we're going into where the panellists actually operate. We're in booth number nine and the panellist has their samples ready. They click on next screen. They then have to choose the number that they've been given for that day and then they're given their instructions. So in this case they're presented with three samples of beverage and they're told that two are identical and that one is different and they're asked to taste them in the order that they're given on screen. The first thing that they're asked to do is to cleanse their palate and so this is where the cracker first makes its entrance. They eat some of the cracker and some water and cleanse the palate to remove any other samples that might be in there and make it clean. The cracker is quite bland so it's not going to add anything into the test but what it helps to do is produce more saliva and it helps to soak up and remove any stimuli that might be in there that affect the test. They'll taste the sample, um, remember it, then they'll cleanse their palate again and move on to the second sample. And when they taste that one, they have to think, well, is that the same or is it different? And then finally, cracker again before they taste the third sample, taste that one, and then they need to decide which of the three is the odd one out. There are lots of different people that come and work in here. Um, we sort of divide them into two groups. We have our expert panel who have been working for over 17 years. They've been selected on a variety of sensory tests to make sure that they have very good um, sensitivity to taste, flavour, aroma, texture. On the other hand, if we're doing tests where we're interested in what consumers will perceive, then we use much larger numbers and we'll invite 100, 150 people in from across the campuses at the university to come in and do some sensory testing for us. We might be looking at whether people can tell a difference when a food is stored for an extra week or not to help with determining use-by dates, for example. Um, or we might be looking to see if they can detect a change in ingredient composition or whether they believe that it is newly improved, as many food products claim to be. Some industries do have their own facilities to do this, but at a university we're particularly interested in how the human perceives sens the sensors and the attributes in foods. Um, and then that is applied in industry for commercial products. Uh, but in a university it's very much a research focus. It's very important that the sensory booths are designed to an international standard in order to prevent any other stimuli from affecting the panellist's decision. So we have very neutral walls, we have specific lighting, this is supposed to mimic northern hemisphere lighting, although we can change that to different colours if we want to mask the appearance of any, any samples. And also the temperature in here is controlled, the humidity is controlled, because all of those things can actually affect how food tastes and we need to control that if we're comparing samples. Sometimes the cracker gets put to one side. Um, for particular products, other palate cleansers are more useful. So for something like tea, which is quite astringent, we might use something like melon. Um, for chocolate, which is quite mouth coating, the panel find that apple is the best palate cleanser. Um, and sometimes we just use water. Crackers must be ruined for you now. Yeah, I can't eat crackers. My kids love crackers, but I never partake in cheese and crackers.